Sienna's so on guard, probably because of her upbringing. That's understandable. Maybe that's why she didn't like Detlaf so much, cause she might have thought that he's trying to get close to her for some ulterior motive, when he really just liked her. Pixies. But she said that he loved like an animal too, passionately, madly, but maybe not rationally, so that part might be pretty scary for someone so guarded already. But since when was love ever rational anyway? Now we're gonna take a little bit of a detour from the beanstalk business. Oh, the three little pigs' homes. Oh, you know the story, don't you? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Looks like big bad's already blown down the houses of straw and sticks. Brick's the only one left. We should look inside. Remember Joss's words? Mm-hmm. One bean lies out in the open, guarded by three nobodies. Yeah, could be it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna do the duck one first, because that one seems to be a side one. Who's a goose anyway? Duck, duck, goose. What do they want from me again? Oh my god. Come on. Huge crowd of these people. People? What? Sienna? Oh lord, why are they attacking her too? This place is going berserk. Oh. Oh hey there. What are you, Pied Piper? Don't see children or- Oh, the rats! Yeah. There you go. Doesn't seem to be at home. What am I doing for this goose again? I forgot already. Books. <laughs> Where are the books? Other? Yeah, I sold my books back in Novigrad, by the way. That's why there's not that many here. Lucy this goosey. Someone's after me. A paranoid goose who lays golden eggs. I know Joss says it's him, but it's not. <laughs> a feather. Broken. It was a fight. Oh no. House is locked. A feather. Broken. It was a fight. Right. Goose feathers. Must have been flapping its wings. When did it just get plucked? That's a morbid Watch thought. Out. Pixies! Oh my gosh, way too many of these guys. I'm starting to run very low on healing items here. Hmm. Oh, there's more. Please and thank you. Oh, this goose doesn't have that many feathers, does it? This looks painful. Hey, there, in the trees. Some kind of camp? Wait, I think I should heal up first. <laughs> Sienna? Defend the goose! The golden eggs will be ours! Yeah. Bandits even here? Oh. Do you want to give me some help? No? Doesn't actually hit me. Huh. You mean to cross the barb Sorry. The Barbarossa? Oh, the goose! Sienna hardly does any damage. But why keep her in a cage? Eggs from free range birds are so much better. Only one bean to go. Oh. Concentrate, Geralt. Sorry. Accidentally clicked on her. Here it is. Got it. You're welcome. Good thing you posted that notice. Never would have found you otherwise. <laughs> oh! Oh look, she laid a golden egg for you. <laughs> <laughs> it 
If only all my employers were that generous. Would have preferred a magic bean, but not about to complain. Do you think we can sell that to the girl? For a good bit of money? Golden egg. Hard-boiled. Very. Magic item. Can we eat this? Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Did you really travel all the way here for a contract? Nature of the job. I don't believe it. You must have had another reason. Hmm. Well, spent a few idyllic months in Beauclair some time past. Part of me wanted to come back, I think. Oh, yes. Visit Toussaint once and you'll always long to return. What about the people who live here? I don't think they'll think that way. Oh, you're here again! Stunning, are they not? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, hello. You always come out of nowhere. There's always so many of them. Although it's not like they hit hard. It's annoying. If we had the art freeze right now, then we could probably deal with it faster. <laughs> Amir! Come back! Goose, you gonna come back home now? Yeah? Live a long and happy life. I'm surprised I can't talk. I feel like everything here has been freely talking like humans. But not the Goose. Who apparently wrote up a notice, but it still can't talk. Oh. Here we are. Three little pigs. Place is still intact. Do you want me to break it? Oh my god. Harlot bread, Vandal. Get it! <laughs> See, even the pigs talk. They got these cute hats too. Pump oh, they didn't like that. Well, how would you like it if someone broke your house? <laughs> I can imagine why they don't like me. Ow. Ow. I think I need beast oil, was it? Is it beast oil? Uh, actually. Yeah. For the steel sword. Oh, some of them are iced up because of me. Come back! It's because I need to use Tawny Owl. It's run out a bit here. There's like other horses running around. Oh, it's deer. Did Sienna kill one by herself? No. Still right here. Oh, I could have just arted them. Well, here we go again with murdering fairy tales. Breaking the things that children's dreams are made of. Do we at least get a bean for that? Blue bean. The big bad witcher huffed and puffed, and look, got a bean. It cannot be. What cannot be? You actually have a sense of humor. <laughs> Stunted a bit, but yeah, it's there. Well, well, aren't you full of surprises? What else are you hiding behind that gruff exterior? Not a bad singer. Do a pretty mean rendition of the Maids of Vicovaro, for instance. But some other time, maybe. We're actually getting along quite well. But here we are chatting away when there's work to do. The beans won't plant themselves, you know. Now we must plant them by the path near Longlock's Tower. Then prepare to meet the giant. So, do you like it here? No. Got a problem with magic in general. Illusions, portals, all that. Don't trust any of it. 
A bow of old-fashioned tastes, eh? I like that. Does she like me? Hmm. I don't think that's good, seeing as how we haven't solved the debt laugh problem yet. Slow now. Just like how I had some preconceived notions of her, it seems like she had some of me too, and they're starting to break apart from all our time spent together. Oh, I didn't even notice how small this place was earlier. I thought it was a distance thing. Hold on. Oh! Hello? Oh, Thumbelina! Hey, watch it. <laughs> Oh. Are you the only one who lives here? Oh, how I want to get in those places. They're locked. Hmm, huh. fine. Fine. Have it your way. Well, let's go, Siana. Hey there. Sometime today. Oh, wow. The tower is right here. So the path to Long Lost's tower. Are you still with me, Siana? Oh. Faster. Maybe in the field here? Definitely. Before we plant it, it would be nice if we can meditate a bit. So I think I'm a little bit low on supplies. Holy god! Whoa, I just saw my life flash before my eyes. There's too many of you guys. Only one of me. Right, this is the spot. Pull out the beans. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Hold on, alright? Let me just meditate a little bit, if we can. Oh. There you go. During these kind of things, we don't have to sit down. All we gotta do is open the meditation screen, and then it'll automatically meditate for us. Nope. Hmm. Ekimara. Cockatrice. Werewolf. Eh, this would be nice too. 70 though? Yeah, okay. It's getting a little bit much now. Wait. Why? The stalk will sprout abruptly. Very abruptly. We must be careful. Don't look at it from above. All right, toss them. She messing with me? Uh <laughs> Something's always gotta go wrong. Whoa! The home stretch. For a while, I thought she was messing with me. Can we really climb our way out of here? Oh, this place made me forget how awful it is outside. People dying. Incredible. Admire the view later. First, we must deal with...
him. The giant. We came to Tucson, defeating a giant. And now we leave Tucson, defeating a giant. Cloud giant. Oh, what? That's cheating. You can't do that. Oh, okay. You're not that slow. And that disappearing act. That's just not cool. The freezing will help though. Maybe not much. Dang. No, we got this. Whew. Got a big belly. All in a day's work. For a fairy tale creature, that was one tough son of a wench. I told you this land had gone ape mad, though I did not expect it to be so severe. Can't help thinking you might have done that on purpose. Why ever would I have? To get rid of your guard, your captor. Getting close to the exit at this point, probably think you don't need me anymore. Well, you're wrong. You still stand to be quite useful to me. <laughs> That's so? How? Plan to use me like you did Detloff? No, I need you for a purpose far simpler. Well, don't just stand there and stare. I need a man, Geralt, and I'm not afraid to say it. I have no idea what awaits me once we leave this place. Treat it as my last wish. Is this just like a completionist thing, or is it gonna actually affect my relationship with Detloff and Regis? <laughs> wow, can't say I've ever done this in a fairy tale land. It's like the Cirque du Soleil here. I wish I wasn't so veiny. <laughs> That's the price of euphoria. No, she lost the hood. Just gonna go our separate ways. No parting words. Did you wish to tell me something? Actually, it'd probably be best. Oh my. No woman's ever treated you this way. Not that I recall, no. <laughs> in that case, at last you felt what so many women in this world feel at times. <laughs> oh my goodness! We've been in the freaking land for so long, my beard grew considerably. I look really old now. Eh. Uh, does the first one imply that I want to get with her? Kinda just want to give her some encouraging words, that's all. <sighs> I just hope this tale has a happy ending. For me, for you. For everyone. That may very well depend on you. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing beyond what you heard. For now. Come. The exit's this way. Maybe we should lay off the potions for a little bit. <laughs> These poor cutscenes. 
Wow. We're standing on clouds right now, literally. Raider Red Mutagen? Hold on. Feel like I can at least get one more thing here now, right? Yes, Bloodbath. Each fatal blow dealt by a sword dismembers the enemy or activates a finisher. That's more a cosmetic thing. Each blow dealt by a weapon in melee combat increases attack power by 5% until combat ends. We'll get it, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. Aw, oh, and the freaking thing is still not full here. Even though I haven't been able to fully take advantage of all the slots for a while now. Oh well. Three little pigs. Why bother with brick? In this climate, even a straw house is nice and cozy. A little pig. The three little pigs are perfect examples of a rather unfortunate phenomenon. Leave even a kind-hearted, warm, naively benign creature to fend for itself, and it won't remain so benign for long. <sighs> the cruel, cruel world. Cloud Giant. Many things fall from the sky other than rain and snow. Frogs, for example, and the Cloud Giant. The Cloud Giant is most likely a degenerated, illusory being. He is an inhabitant of the castle in the sky in the land of a thousand fables. This land was abandoned and left untended for years, during which time it began to rot, fester, and degrade. The Cloud Giant was most likely meant to be a pleasant-natured strongman who would carry the Duke's young daughters on his shoulders and never grow tired. When he became degenerated and overgrown, however, he turned into a dangerous monster. After Jack stole his goose and laid golden eggs, the Cloud Giant decided in the future anyone who climbed onto his cloud would be tossed off without a word of warning. Understandable. He's had it. Go on, jump in the well. Willow the Wisp. Think it's got something to show us. Careful. It's not to be trusted. You don't trust anybody. Just curious. Why do you want the heart of Toussaint and the ducal wine? They were my right, my due. Doubt we would have figured you out if you hadn't tried to get them. Yes. You know that, don't you? I do, and I regret nothing. One lives but once. Oh, I can respect that. Here, we need but jump into the well. You first. The well? Here? What about the rest of this place? Is that a curiosity? If she hadn't gotten the wine, then we never would have solved this, and probably Detlef would have just killed everybody. But the whole reason why she's doing this to begin with is sort of like, you know, regaining what she's lost. So therefore, she had to get the wine. Oh! <laughs> Overshot it. Take two. After midnight. Portals in a fountain? Not terribly practical. It was a secret passage. Anariette and I would use it to... Hide from your governess. Which luckily she noted down in her diary. Thus I knew where to await you. Uh, never mind that. Has the young lady agreed to help clean up the mess she's made? She has. And stop treating me as if I were a child. Would you prefer I treated you like the lying manipulator you are? Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, both of you. But... No buts. Let's go. Really want to be done with this. Let's go to Detlaf already. We don't want this place to really burn down entirely. We're going to Tesha Mutna. Will Detlaf still be here, though? Nice place, isn't it? Offers a lovely view of the valley. 
On a clear day, you can see the outlines of Duntine. Is it, though? A ruin like any other, I think. Ugh, so sensitive. So aware. Honestly, what did Declaf ever see in you? Regis. Perhaps tell you himself. Regis is being kind of uncharacteristically provocative right now. You nervous? Mm-hmm. It's always a bit nerve-wracking meeting an ex. Especially so when said ex is a vampire. I doubt he'll be in the mood for jests. I know. Ugh, may I be honest? Yes, I'm nervous. I really would prefer just to run off. I gave my word I would help, I know. But how much is that worth? Yet I owe him this meeting. And that is that. Let's get ready. Dedloff will be here any moment now. was a ruse. Dead love. It's not that simple. I... Oh, no. It's very simple. You either deceived me or not. In forgiving you, I grieve. For now, we must part. Whoa! What? what? But how? Oh my god, Detlef didn't want to talk at all. The ribbon. Ha! Seems I've been fooled again. She will pay for this sooner or later. She will pay! You never should have meddled with her! Hey, Regis. Oh my gosh. Mm. Brother is fighting. If we didn't have the ribbon, I don't think there was anything we just could have done to guarantee that Siana would be okay. So every single time these people promise me things, it's really all just empty words. They'd like to fulfill their promises, but realistically... <laughs> I look about as ugly as either of them. This is perfect. Oh! Hey, 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 don't kill each other! You're brothers! Oh. Regis can't do it. Oh! But that love can! Oh! <gasps> Oh, my veins disappeared. I want you just the nuts. You tricked me. Both of you. Nobody tricked anybody. Didn't plan any of it. Silence. God. 
I can't believe you'd hurt Regis like that. Even though the only reason you're still alive right now is because he asked for you to not be killed. Whoa! Is this what a higher vampire normally looks like? If you acknowledge any gods, start praying now. Oh my god. Whoa! Start praying now. I think we have to avoid this bat attack entirely. Oh! That's our chance. Oh! Oh! He gets stuck in the sludge. Oh my god. This point ain't good enough. Oh, I gotta, like, get further away. Mm. No! That bat attack is a one-hit kill, no matter what I do. Full Quen, full health, doesn't matter. So Calm down, all right? Calm down. Here we go. Oh no, I didn't take black blood! It probably didn't matter though. Oh my god. Whoa. <gasps> oh my god, vampires are not what we think they are. It's not the nice gentlemanly thing. Do you think that will stop me? Prepare to die, Witcher! Wait, I'm trying to get these hearts? Not the guy chasing me? Okay, I can do that. Yeah, that guy doesn't have a health bar. We need to focus on the other people. People being these hearts here. Or no, this guy does have a health bar. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, no. No. Really bad. I gotta focus on using food here for now. Oh. Don't let up, don't let up. Keep going. For all I know, a new one might come back. Is it back? It is! No! No! Don't do this to me, alright? How's this? Oh, there's more! Now what? Last one. Oh! Okay, we're not in a hurry. Let's hang back a little bit here. My toxicity is really limiting my health in coming back. Oh. <laughs> oh.
Regis! Oh, that laugh. It didn't have to be like this. We even went out of the way to try to appease him, so, but yet, in the end. <coughs> oh, but he might not be dead yet because vampires. Leave him to me. Be gone. I can't let. I insist. Even Regis understands. And all I can think about is how, in his diary, he wrote that he would probably have to part with his friend. a smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. <laughs> Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. Which I have none of. <laughs> Usually wear something different, better suited to my trade. Got nothing against this particular outfit, though. Just don't exactly feel comfortable in it. And I despise formal occasions. Hmm. Nothing one can't get accustomed to. Now, be so kind as to stand still. All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Palace protocol places enormous emphasis on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else. Which calls for lordly, glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Sound wistful. Pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Why would Regis want to attend a ceremony celebrating the death of his friend? He knew Detlef had to die, and he did, but he doesn't have to celebrate it. Hmm. Ceremonies, medals honoring virtues, just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either, and I keep thinking of the last great virtue, compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory, after all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. 
Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victim's names to Detlaf. Perhaps we missed something. Yeah, sure, okay. Is Siana still awaiting trial right now, or...? Getting locked up in a tower? Not so bad in comparison to a prison. She's still getting it pretty good right now. Regis, Bootblack didn't say anything about making deliveries when we talked to him. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. You'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters. What's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. These kids are not giving us all the information they have. The boot black and the, the girl who sells everything. They all try to act so mature beyond their ages and all. Hmm. No, we got nothing else to do. All in all, why not check up on that? We'll go together, assuming we're done here. I am done, yes. It lies in your hands now to see if you are able to present my handiwork at the ceremony with the dignity it is due. Or if you will first destroy it, crawling about the city's underbelly. We'll see. Promise to be careful. No promises in keeping it clean, though. It's the swordsman! Good to see you! Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know! Step on up! Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on then! I'm a proponent of free speech and I will gladly tell you all I know! But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? This kid knows how to do business. Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the soles that wear them. Clean boots, clean soles. A fine slogan. How's business? Well enough, I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. <laughs> Man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young, got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. <laughs> How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Why didn't you tell us this before, when we first talked? You didn't ask about beggars now, did you? You're not very helpful now, are you? Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. Each was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh, I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Where'd they get the letters? They picked them up? Get them from someone? I don't know. They'd come, hand me a letter, and walk away. I asked no questions. Geralt, allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that bootshine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, 
Then right. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. We must visit the shelter. Look around inside. Oh, we're spending a little bit too much time on this for this to be nothing, right? Because at first I was like, ah, oh, fifth victim, whatever, it's over already. Price list. Cleaning services price list. Leather boots, polish, shine, 20 crowns. Hmm. <laughs> Single leather boot polish? <laughs> How does that even help with anything? 12 crowns? Cleaning knights, girdles, and other leather accessories, 30 crowns. Special offer metal cleaning. Wow. This kid does everything. Come a mess, leave well dressed. You'll see that I'm a bleeding best. Nice slogan, kid. Hey there. Greetings, Guardian Witcher. Thanks to you, my little enterprise is in ruddy health. Can't really see that anything's changed. All in due time. At the moment, I'm perusing my options. Asking after prices, verifying quality. You know, it's very easy to squander coin. But rest assured, I will spend mine very wisely. My, my. If you're like this now, who will you be when you're older? A very rich man. <laughs> He's gonna be a banker. Get many customers? Droves and loads. Though I expect to have more. My trade always booms when the tawnies are on. Knight's boots get dirtier then? It's not just the boots. When they fight, they soil all. I shine their armor, helmets, belts, sheaths. They like them shiny as a dog's danglers. Oh, pardon. <laughs> it's fine. You're pretty chatty. Nosy. I would say inquisitive and sociable. Besides, a good tradesman ought to amuse his clients with small talk. Fair enough. Must know a lot about the folk of Beauclair. All about all, meaning everything about everyone. I know who slept with who, and who wishes they had. I know who's friends, and who'd slit each other's throats. Potentially dangerous, that kind of knowledge. Bah. But I'm known to keep my tongue tight, my mouth sealed tight. Why, if I blapped what I hear, they'd have done me in long past. As it is, all that's said on my stand stays on my stand. That's probably a good policy to have for someone like you. Take care now. Come early, come often. I'll perfect your look, and not only yours, but every man's woman's child's. I just use your services. You don't gotta... You don't gotta sell me like this. <laughs> boot black. Geralt's path crossed out of the boot black again later on. Once more, the reason had something to do with Detloff. The lad was able to tell Geralt and Regis how the letters with the beast's victims' names on them had been delivered to Detloff. It can be truly amazing how much useful information one simple child laborer can possess. Because they're unseeming, that's why. It should be right around here. Right. Oh, possible. Bunch of beggars. You've to move your little camp elsewhere, got it? This is a decent district. We need no filth folk bumming about. Gentlemen, Less there's or no more. need to raise your voices. Let's keep our calm. Our calm is exactly what you disturb. Your vagrants bring pestilence, take work from honest folk, and sponge off ducal relief. My folk do not harm his soul, and they've nowhere else to go. We don't give a flying thought. We didn't even know there was a shelter here. You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it, only to tire our lips. We'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm, please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Stram, decent folk live here. The shelter, them living here, bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballot, another defender of the poor, fighter for justice. Damn nuisance. 
We for our women and young folk living next door, when even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Decent folk you mention, mean yourselves. Why? <laughs> Do you doubt it? Hell yes. Hear that, Artois? He poking insults us. On our own turf. We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. We gotta try our best to not dirty our outfit. You are one damp script. Well, my spirit as well as my flesh is weak. How about we try to do this without getting a single hit in on us? You're a bandit. Would be nice if we could group you up. A witcher. Fucking twit. Not a witcher. Oh dear. Oh, we're getting into a bit of a tight spot here. Don't like that very much. Come now, Twitcher. Try me. <laughs> I'm not hitting anybody for anything right now because they're all on guard. What? Lost your nerve? Countering them is how we're gonna um, get them to lose their guard here. All right. I could take a hint. Come, time to go. I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beggars. I do not oppose going elsewhere were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. Thank you. What is this place? Poor house? You could call it that. They come here to rest and eat a hot meal. You help them, why? Because they need help. Great answer. Need some information. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Garl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your, uh... Wards supposed to meet him recently or soon? Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. You can question them yourselves. Sure all your usual beggars will be here? They're not obliged to come, of course. But they rarely find a decent meal elsewhere. So almost all in the area eat here. Gotta find the specific one with the fifth name. Thanks. We'll wait. Nice of you to let us. Almost feel like we should just ask Siana ourselves. Does she plan on slow carrying this out? It is all over now. But what about her coming back to Tucson? Does she want something? My dears, I have a matter to address before I serve this soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief. For if you draw it out, your soup will go cold. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeal? We were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. You were given a letter and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. Thank you. Who else? I got the one too. I gave it to the boot black. And Freshy, he got one. But he can't tell you as he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas. I feel like it's incredibly tone deaf of us to come here in a fancy outfit. But okay, good! This guy has a letter! It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over, or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. But I was to deliver it personally. 
Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightening. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. These men helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. I'm threatening him now. All right, take it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there. The lack of compassion. Damn it. What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. I... I must say, even I did not expect this. This time, you will see to our Duquesa. It oh! seems we underestimated Siana rather grossly. <gasps> Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Does that make it less painful for her? For some reason, she wants to mutilate her body, but... She wants to make it painless? Ah, oh, back when we were in the freaking land of fables, she was talking about how all those years, Anna Henrietta never did anything for her. Oh, the lack of compassion. I don't think that's true though, because Anna Henrietta clearly did care about her. It's just that, what could she really do? She didn't know where you were, she didn't even know if you were alive. Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. And now, that coup d'etat person is in the palace. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Sienna planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtue's their only link, enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Siana, even as she had those she despised killed off one by one, leaving the Duchess for last. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons. Most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions, ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Sienna murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? From an inborn penchant for evil? Yes, yes and yes. All seem likely, and none are mutually exclusive. But if you'd like to know for certain, you could always ask her yourself. Mm, I want to, but uh, if I say this one, is that going to be saying no? Actually, love to learn her motives. Praiseworthy, I suppose. Sometimes one should stare evil in the face. Seems a bit strong, no? She used my friend as her tool for killing. I believe I've every right to condemn her. But I support your lust for the truth. Some philosophers think empirical examination the sole path to knowledge. I believe you mentioned the Duchess keeps Siana locked up. Courtiers were insisting on a harsher punishment. Much harsher. Think Anna Henrietta had to protect her sister from a lynch mob as much as she wanted to protect her subjects from a criminal. One way or another, she's locked away in a secluded wing of the palace, awaiting trial before a court of law. I'd need to get past some guards to see her. Yeah, that's still happening. Coming with? Of course not. I shall await you at Mayor Lachey's Long. I'll not risk entering the palace after Detlaf and his minions rampage. Besides, I vastly prefer the company of a simple mug of mandrake brew to that of the Duchess's vile sister. So, said straight up, it means you're going off to get drunk because you hate Siana. I've never been fond of categorical statements of that kind, but I admit I could not vouch for my behavior in her presence. She treated Detlaf cruelly, caused his death in the end, and now this, atop all that, no Geralt. I will not go with you. I will await you at the cemetery. Yeah, honestly, that laugh tried to kill us and hurt the city and all. But at the end of the day, he still was kind of a victim of Siana's plot. He hardly had any agency in this whole thing. 
All he did. He did it because he wanted to save the woman he loved. Who turned out to be the one blackmailing him. So that was wonderful. Oh, I'm really sorry, but I think I dirtied the outfit. <laughs> kind of forgot about it for a while. We gotta go to the castle here. Probably a better plan for me to fast travel, right? Over here? Oh god, as if the mud wasn't bad enough, I'm even wandering through the rivers and all. Oh, what?! We've still got new markers here? You've gotta be kidding me! The city of Beauclair, San Sebastian, quickly grew to fill all space within its walls and spill out beyond it. This gave rise to the lower town, also known by the name of its founder, San Sebastian. Currently, the district is primarily home to laborers and their workshops and links Hauteville with the port, the center of trade for Beauclair and the entire duchy. And one place that still hasn't really come up in all this time is Toussaint Prison. I wonder if that's going to be a thing. If we... I don't know, maybe we'll apprehend a Siana or something. Or maybe that place is just not something we'll go to? What are we trying to figure out here today? Does Siana still want to carry out her plan right now? Can she? Nobody's willing to do her bidding right now, and she's locked up. But how does she feel right now? Because Anna Henrietta is protecting her. If it wasn't for your sister, you'd be lynched by a mob right now. Oh, how come I can't get in? Is it below? Oops. Here? Oh, yes. Right, earlier we went in a little bit, but we never finished looking at it. Where is everybody? No guards? Pomp and strange circumstance. <laughs> Kitchen. Your sister is keeping you here, but you don't have to worry about food or shelter. You probably live better than a lot of people in the city, even though you're confined here. For example, the people in the shelter. Uh, I came from here. Halt! Need to see Siana urgently. In the matter of? Want to talk to her. It's important. Want to talk? Go see your gran at tea time. Not one locked up on the Duquesa's orders. No doing without special permission. Period. Found some information important to her case. Need an explanation. Urgently. Ah, fine then. You're that witcher who solved the murders, no? Then you for my permission, but only for a few minutes. Promise to be brief. Oh! For a second, I thought we were really gonna get locked out. I don't think we should be accusing her of anything yet, because that's gonna put her on the defensive. We're here to talk. Let's just learn about what she wants, first. The Witcher will speak with the inmate. You can take a momentary break. As long as it's truly but a moment. Highly irregular, this. Have you come to see how I fare? I'm fine, thank you. Artorius's Ripon worked wonders. It's a shame they took it from me I for... know who the fifth victim was supposed to be. Goodness, you're simply a compulsive snoop. I'm in prison. Deadlaf is dead. Could you not just drop it? Sienna, stop pretending you couldn't care less. I know it's an act, and it's really starting to wear. She's dangerous. Why do you want to kill her? For such an accomplished investigator to ask about the obvious? Come now, Geralt. Why do you think? <sighs> it's obviously this one. 
They were sisters when they were young. They were really, really close. Because she turned her back on you, then banished all memory of you. Bravo, Geralt. Yet another riddle solved, and your sick curiosity sated. Well, what now? Off to share your discovery with Anna Henrietta. No, she's no longer in danger, true. But she very well might add a little something to your reward. Definitely gonna tell her. Not necessarily for the coin, though. Then why do it at all? She oughta know. If only cause you'll probably try to kill her again if she ever lets you out. Yes. I probably will. Something we agree on. Does it have to be like this? Perhaps, just for a second, you could stop dwelling on all the wrongs folk have done you, and forgive her. Why should I? For old time's sake, you loved each other once. <sighs> Please. I don't know who fed you that rubbish, but... Read your governess's diary. You played together, were inseparable. Honorietta'd get you into trouble sometimes, sure. But there were also times she stood up for you. When you had nightmares, only she could calm you. Time eats away at memories, distorts them. Sometimes we only remember the good. Sometimes only the bad. If she loved me so, why did she wash her hands off me? Forget me, hmm? That's what you think. Have you ever talked to her about this? Honestly, of all the people who have wronged you, Anna Henrietta is... Pretty low on the list. It's your parents. It's tradition. It's all the knights who abused you when you were exiled. Don't know. But you could just ask her instead of sending monsters after her. There's nothing she could say to change what she did to me. To justify it. Maybe. But there's nothing out there to justify what you did to her and all Toussaint. Yet Anna Henrietta hasn't given up on you. Ugh. You meant what you said in the Land of a Thousand Fables. You really want a happy ending to this story, don't you? Of course. Ah, with all of us living happily ever after. Go, Witcher, or they'll give your medal to another. And that would be a shame. Farewell, Sienna. Commander de la Tour would like to see you. Shall we go at once? Oh, just thinking back to how that diary was talking about how, oh, Sienna could never sleep soundly without Anna Henrietta at her side. The whole sisterly bond between them does really tug at my heart, especially as someone who didn't grow up alongside a sibling. I feel like I'm personally a little bit envious about that kind of thing. Let's go. Wanna see him too. Damien. Geralt, it's about time. Ready for the ceremony? Uh. Your face. Yeah. Doesn't look good. Though it looked even worse last I saw you. I apply a balm of Annika. Yeah, I hardly feel it anymore. Mm, we do have to tell, right? I think we do, because. Especially because she never. <laughs> She never gave me a concrete thing at the end of that conversation. Got some important information. Anna Henrietta was supposed to be Detloff and Siana's fifth victim. You are certain of this? Completely. Found proof. Inconceivable. How could she? The murders, the mayhem she brought down on the city, were they not enough? She sought to strike down her own sister. Her liege. Traitor. I must alert my men. Enlarge the Duchess's honor guard. Make certain Sylvia Anna is closely watched during the questioning. I'll see to it personally. 
I thank you, Witcher, for alerting me, and I appreciate your attentiveness. Let's begin the ceremony. Come with me. The Duchess awaits. So he's tightening security, just in case if anything happens. I hope nothing happens. In the guild's name, I beg your assistance, your enlightened highness. Without barrels, production will come to a stop and it will be the end of us. You lost them all in the fire. These are horrible tidings. Oh, we are most dreadfully saddened. Yes, your enlightened highness all. Once the beasts had clawed their way into the warehouse, the whole place went up in flames. I shall dispatch a palace guardsman to examine the site of the blaze. If things are as you say, fitting compensation shall be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Thank you, your enlightened highness. Your Grace, Geralt of Rivia has arrived. My dear subjects, we come now to our next point of business. Of all the duties which fall upon my shoulders, as the ruler of this dominion, this duty is dearest to my heart. For now, we shall award the Order of Vitis Vinifera, Tucson's highest honor. Geralt of Rivia, slayer of the Beast of Beauclair, step forth. <coughs> None of my friends and family came. We bestow the distinction upon the Witcher, who saved Beauclair from the terrible beast. Such is our desire. May this symbol serve as a reminder to all that the Witcher shall forever remain a friend of Beauclair. In more familiar terms now, I thank you immensely, Geralt. Damien has your reward for you. After all, it was but a contract. Thank you. I have a small surprise for you, in addition. Whoa. I give you more than a dozen barrels of Son Real, a wine normally reserved for the ducal table. The gustatory experience of a lifetime awaits. Are you content? I am content. Ooh. Yeah, this one is a little bit... There's so many things we're unsure about right now. If, after our talk, Sienna has actually changed her mind and forgiven Anna Henrietta, then if we bring this up now, that might cause Anna Henrietta to be antagonistic towards her own sister. But if I don't see it, then there's a possibility that this would all just blow over and we will have a happily ever after. <sighs> but I don't think it makes any sense that we told Damien de la Tour but not Anna herself. Geralt did already say without my prompting that he would tell Anna Henrietta about it though. And if we really want the sisters to truly begin anew again, I think we need to just be... We need them both to be honest with each other. No more lies and deception. There's so many ways this can go wrong. I am, and truly grateful, Your Grace. Sadly, I'm afraid I have to sour the mood. It's Sienna. She plotted to have you killed, Duchess. Planned to use Deadloff. You were to be the Beast's fifth victim. This cannot be true. You're mistaken. You must be. I have proof. Well, she's not immediately angry. That's a good sign. I do not believe it. In a moment, I shall speak to Sianna. Will you assist me? 
You returned my sister to me, yet what you tell me now I find devastating. I've come to doubt that I can judge her fairly. I'd far prefer to learn you're mistaken, Geralt. I'm not. In fact, I'd recommend you be particularly careful around her. You exaggerate, Witcher. She is my sister. I know well how to speak to her. When you are children. If my presence will help in any manner, of course I'll stay. We shall now question a person implicated in the murders which recently ravaged our fair city of Beauclair. Captain De La Tour, show Sylvia Anna in. She's nervous. I don't think it's because she's afraid of getting killed, though. It's more of a heart being broken thing. The Witcher will take part in our talk. The Duchess requested I be present. You have committed crimes. Grave crimes. Yet you are my sister, and my heart does not allow me to treat you as a common criminal. Nor does it let me believe you sought my demise. My heart yearns to know you were swayed by the monster Detlaf. You yourself would never stoop so low. Thus I have asked Geralt to advise me, as one impartial. I shall now hear what he has to say. Oh, I do feel Sienna is clearly guilty, but I don't think that's all that matters. Bitterness consumes Sienna. She had cause to resent many of the court of Beauclair. I know her reasons, understand them even. But I can't condone the actions she chose to take. What is he talking about, Sienna? You know exactly what. I was forcibly exiled, remember? To your benefit. You knew well the throne would then be yours, though I was the elder. The ministers I can understand. They'd hated me since I was a child, thought me a poor prospect for the wife of a duke. I even understand our parents. I'd always sensed the problem. They simply feared me, for I dared to be free. That fabricated curse, it fell into their laps. A gift from above that brought relief. But you... Your dagger hurt most. You were my honorietta, dammit. My darling little sister. Now do you understand, Witcher? She betrayed me. Claim to understand them all? Why'd you come back for revenge? Have them all cut down, then? They deserved my vengeance. They detested me, all of them, as long as I can remember. But Honorietta understood me. Once. She was all I could cling to. Her betrayal hurt the most. You were children then. You and your sister both had no control over what happened. You're wrong, Witcher. She had control. Remember, dear sister? The day they banished me from the palace. Of course, I'd had the idea to pelt the Nilfgaardian envoy with fish bladders, which we filled with rancid suet on a lark. And which you set afire at the last to impress me, I imagine. And I admit, you did. Hit him right in his hideous bold patch. Never laughed so hard in my life. But when it came time to find the culprit, you said not a word. I took all the blame and all the punishment. It's true. I did not stand up for you. I was too afraid. The council was unanimous. They listed all my offenses, my flights from the palace, supposed acts of cruelty, inappropriate friendships. They cast me out, but you, the only one to understand me, you cowered in a corner, 
lifted not a finger to help. Not before, not after. You never tried to find me. That's not true. I searched for you. Sent out knights, gathered tidings from without. You did not wish to be found. Since the day you vanished, I have lived with the knowledge that I failed you. I'm sorry, dear sister. Can you forgive me? Nobody in this world doesn't make mistakes. Especially... Especially humans. All in all, best part of the whole ceremony? It was short. Perhaps for you, as you ducked out early. The others are probably just getting started. The drunkenness never ends in this quaint realm. Not so fond of Toussaint after all, are we? Oh, uh, this place is like a strong wine, Geralt. Good in small sips. How do you find my personal brew? Not too strong. Just right. Credit the local mandrake of the Alrauna Diabolus variety for that. The tubers which grow in this area's volcanic soil have an altogether unique flavor profile and display a remarkably uncommon dark brown tint. Fascinating. All I can say is this batch turned out excellent. Indeed. It might be wise to stockpile some roots for the future. Would you care to accompany me? Right now? You decide to go root picking now? It's dark out. Ah, oh, Geralt. Even were I generously to assume it had simply slipped your mind that I'm a vampire and thus need no light to see, I'd never believe you had also forgotten that you likewise have absolutely no trouble seeing in the dark. So, shall we? Gosh, but I'm scared of the dark, okay? <laughs> if you think it's a good idea, let's go. But I think you might be forgetting one thing. Fresh mandrake root of this variety is highly toxic, even to a witcher. Ah, not a problem. I never forget matters of safety and hygiene in alchemy. Here, gloves and a mask. Don them, and you shall be in no danger. Thanks. Right then, let's go. This moonlight makes me oh so dreamy. Penny for your thoughts. Let me guess. Succubus twins? Uh, no, I was thinking about... Oh, how anything can look interesting when properly lit. One second. I just want to put on the gloves you gave me. Which is where? Not the doublet. Mask? <laughs> Things are slowly coming to an end now, and we're just... Seeing it all play out, pretty much. Even an old necrophage corpse? You've not an ounce of refinement in you, have you? <laughs> Feels like so many things have happened. That, when we finally get a moment of peace, I'm a little bit... tired. Hmm. Mandrake roots? I'm sure we can find some here. That's one. And that's a two. Did you get any Regis? Now, where'd that bloodsucker go? Won't be easy to track down. He's a 
vampire after all. Damn it, where'd you go? How is Regis feeling? He had to kill one of his oldest friends. Regis! And the one who personally saved him, too. Damn it, where'd you go? But life goes on. Especially for a vampire. Regis! What? Whoa! Damn it, where'd you go? You raise your hand against a vampire! You shall die for that! Me? I did what I had to do! Traitor! Collaborator! Oh no! Those Bruxae, they called you a traitor. Alas, we have a very simple code of honor, we vampires. So simple you might call it trivial. Either one is with us, unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances, or... Won't let it go, will they? They will not. Fortunately, we have another rule. An unwritten one, and just as trivial as the first. It is neatly summarized in the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is why I must leave Toussaint. For a vastly long time, most like. Yeah, I get it. Oh, let us make for my camp. I've an overwhelming desire to have another drink. Come to Karamoran. If you'd like. Mmm, supreme bouquet. Firm, defined beginning, then develops gently, rising to a, a startling finish. Don't you think? Not much of a connoisseur. Then it is high time you started your education. After all, the Corvo Bianco vineyard is now yours. By the way, I left a gift for you at your new home. On the nightstand. <laughs> Thanks. Mind telling me what it is? Ugh, a trifle. That will nonetheless be useful should you need mutagens. Incidentally, have you thought about what you'll do with your prize? Shall you hang your swords over the mantle and take to pruning vines? I can't commit to something so far in the future. Is it that far in the future, though? Maybe not. Uh, don't really know yet. Might find the life of a hard-working vintner too tempting one day. Or maybe I'll just stick to the path, go on roaming, staring up at the stars after laying my bedroll at the roadside. Ah, roadsides, bedrolls, and the sky above. I sense some poetry coming on, which of course brings to mind Dandelion. How is he doing? I can remember a night, not too far from here if I'm not mistaken. We hid in a cave while a blizzard raged all about. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? we just set off to rescue Ciri from Vilgefortz. Oh. Our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly. But that first stay in Beauclair, far calmer than this one. Seemed like a land straight out of a fairy tale back then. Its sole problem, cellars too small to accommodate all that wine. Appearances, Geralt. Appearances, like Mamoons and Dopplers, deceive. So what did become of Vilgefortz. Killed him. Sure wasn't easy, though. What about you? Any idea where you'll go? Distance is of the essence. I thought I might venture south. Nilfgaard? Why ever not? The Nilfgaardians are a modern society. None there believe in vampires anymore. This fact alone could be very useful to one wishing to remain incognito. Hmm. Interesting point of view. It's sad that we can't live out in the open without being discriminated against or... killed. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Oh. Sit here a while longer. So we shall, my friend. 
We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do. <laughs> He's looking at me. Uh, actually, I'd love to go home. Oh. So the credits just played, but I think I'm gonna save that for the very last video. Seems like there's one more quest for us to look at here. Geralt decided to go home to Corvo Bianco. Regis did say that he left a gift for me at the nightstand. I guess we'll go check it out. Regis is gone already. 5 a.m. We're watching the daybreak. This is weird. This feels really weird. <laughs> like, everything is done now. What do I do? We're done The Witcher 3. My god. Uh... Oh, what is that? Should I go check this out first? Yeah, let's, because that's not the main quest here. Alright. Hey, everybody. Back in Beauclair again. As an eternal friend of Toussaint now, of course. And Beauclair. Who's looking for me here? A fruitful hunt to you, Witcher. Letter from opponents of the new Gwent faction. Oh, this still? To the cocksucking scrote sniffer organizing this fucking disgrace of a tournament. Monnier, you cunt of account. It's bad enough you go ruining our cherished game, but now you've the bollocks to put on a public tournament where the hallowed rules of Gwent are openly flouted. You might as well have took a risty dump on the graves of our ancestor. Folk who don't respect tradition don't deserve my respect either. So shut your fucking freak show down. Now, or I'll shut it down for you and beat your daft hate into a bloody pulp. Daft Haid, like head, <laughs> into a bloody pulp while I'm at it. And don't think this is an idle threat. Note this letter is signed, because I'm not some fucking coward blowing off steam in anonymity, but an outraged citizen ready to take matters into his own hands. And there is a shitload of others ready to do the same with me. With no fucking regards whatsoever, Yaki. Wow. <laughs> I love how this foul letter is the first thing we read after the nice credits roll. And this was a letter revealing the fifth victim. This time you must see to our duquesa. Anna Henrietta knows nothing of empathy. Her heart is cold. The shard of ice you must tear from her breast. Yet first you must snap her neck, quickly and to effect. Once that is done, Rena shall go free. Hopefully all of this is in the past now. We don't really know what Siana's punishment will be because it is still true that she was the mastermind behind everything that happened. Now what's going on here? Fifa la fête. Guillaume? Guillaume, what... what are you doing here? Leave me be. Without my Vivian, life has no meaning. You are the last to whom I wish to speak. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> it's not really a quest here. They just wanted me to see Guillaume. Well, I mean, it's been a while already. You should... You need to... You need to move on and just get over it. I don't know what you want from me. He seemed like he was kind of drunk, which... I mean, it's a bit worrying, but... There's not much we can do about that. Both of their things updated. <laughs> this was kind of random. Why didn't they show me this before? Guillaume. I almost forgot about you. Guillaume felt like he had been rejected and drowned his sorrows in wine. Geralt tried to explain to him, one cannot force love on anyone. Seems like he still hasn't learned it yet, which, you know, hopefully is something that he'll learn by himself in due time. Vivian felt free for the first time in her life. 
she decided to make maximal use of the time remaining to her and set out to travel the world. Yeah, who knows? Maybe she's someone we can come across randomly too, just like Yom. Okay. Now we can go back to Gorvo Bianco for real. I really don't know why they randomly decided to show me Guillaume now of all times, though. Whoa! Something on fire? Is that a new song? No, this is just the chimney, but over there, something does seem to be on fire. What's in the distance? Is that supposed to be Beauclair? Oh, it might be the tourney, I guess. The smoke seems a little black, though. Bread adds a spring to your step. Wine adorns your head with thorns. There is a gift on my nightstand. Master Witcher, some unknown individual barged into the residence. I resisted as best I could, but to no avail. Who is it? Alas, they did not do me the basic courtesy of introducing themselves. They're not here. Unexpected as ever. Oh. Long time no see. And beautiful as ever. Won't you even ask why I've come? Or how I found you? Wouldn't get a straight answer anyway. Quite true. Used to bother me all your secrets. Now I know if you have something to tell me, you'll tell me. Don't need to ask. I missed you, Geralt. Madly. Come outside. We can hold hands and stare at the sky. Like some shitty two-crown romance. It's been so long since I've heard Yen's voice. I felt really foreign to hear it. few books. Let me guess. Working on a new spell? Not at all. These aren't grimoires, just pleasure reading. The name of the orchid. A widower for half a year. Huh. <laughs> Always thought you too busy to make time for something as impractical as pleasure reading. Because I was. But now, I'm not. A few weeks ago, I awoke to the realization that I know not what to do next. I have no plan. I have no goal. And you know what? I like that. Finally, I can stop thinking about politics and focus on what's important to me. Which is why I came here. Well, we're gonna get bored of that kind of lifestyle soon, and oh my god, is that a freaking peacock or what? It's just right next to me! Liking Tucson so far? Hmm... The landscape's lovely, and the towns are charming, no question about that. But? But the southern sun plays havoc with my wardrobe. To be blunt, wear black down here and you're pretty damn hot. Hmm. <laughs> Might need to think about changing your color palette. Off-white and pea-green, for instance. <laughs> and I'll wear scents distilled from turnips and daisies. <laughs> I think I shall simply stay in the shade. And you'll bring me cool drinks. At regular intervals. Bring you whatever you want. There's nothing left for us to do now. We're literally in retirement. You know, feels kind of strange having a home. Hmm, I must say I never pictured you owning real estate. <laughs> Was something of an accident. But I'm not about to complain. Yen, 
Back then, before we fought the hunt, said you wanted to run away with me to the world's end. This vineyard, good enough? Hmm, yes, although there's one thing missing. Namely? I shall give you a hint. It's large, white, <laughs> has four legs, category taxidermy. Oh yeah, the unicorn. Fine, you can bring it down here. I knew you'd see things my way. Oh, it's still in Skellige right now. Ever thought this day would come? Me and you, peace and quiet. Bees buzzing, birds chirping. I almost regret delaying so long before coming to you. I was quite the silly goose. You have doubts? Though I imagine it might have been hard coming after me. Always were proud as a peacock. Please, Geralt. I'm not like other sorceresses to feel that following someone means my wings have been clipped. Ooh, watch what you say about your colleagues. Remember, it's an ill bird that fouls its own nest. Well said, Witcher. You're not only handsome, but wise, too. I feel a bit like the cat that got the canary. Yeah, and I'm... Mm. Damn it, you win. This time. Ha! How'd that start, anyway? Our duels in wordplay. Forgotten. It was at a vernissage in Bannard. You started it to keep from going mad with boredom. I remember finding your sense of humor both groan-worthy and somehow endearing. Never change, Geralt. I beg you. It is so strange to have such a normal conversation where we don't have to talk about the end of the world or somebody dying or missing or whatever. It's just weird to settle down. But we deserve it after all we've been through. So... Talk again later? Of course. I'm not going anywhere. Is that the end of the quest? It is. And then now we have nothing. We have nothing! There is no main quest tab! I'm not gonna open this because I know what's in here and I don't want to see it. But there is no main quest tab! What do I do with my life now? <laughs> well, before we think about that, why don't we check our nightstand? Wait, did Regis... This wasn't Regis' gift, right? Because I'm guessing Regis actually did leave me something on my nightstand? You know, that smoke is starting to really bother me in the distance there. Is that something I don't have to worry about? By the way, up until the very end, we never had anything to do with the prison. On that little crane aisle. I wonder why. Maybe that's on the alternative path or something. Something on my nightstand. Muted generator. Letter from Regis. Dear Geralt, if you are reading these words, it means that I am already far beyond the borders of Tucson, and you have found my muted generator. Of course, you may dub this instrument however you like, perhaps something more fitting to your taste or better reflecting its function, for I have no doubt your knowledge on the subject of mutagens is far more profound and thorough than mine. I have been working on this device in my spare time, but now it is finished and I am convinced, as convinced an inventor can be before his invention has been used as intended, of the usefulness of this apparatus. You are surely wondering what function it is meant to serve, as the name indicates. The muta generator generates mutagens. It operates by absorbing electromagical energy waves from bodies, in this case, the bodies of the monsters and evildoers you kill. And, when it has absorbed enough so as to be charged a critical amount, the muta generator changes the stored energy into a greater mutagen, which I suspect you will make good use of. As you surely understand, I am an amateur engineer, which is why you must forgive the lack of an ability for you to direct this operation. Which mutagen emerges as a result is determined at random, meaning chance will decide if it is a green, red, or blue mutagen. Chance, yet I have noted the colors tend to alternate, by and large. I trust you will find my gift useful. Your dearly devoted friend, Emil Regis Rahelik Terziev Godfroy. 
P.S. You might be wondering why I decided to toss the muted generator into your home instead of simply handing it to you in person. Well, you must know I did it out of modesty, believe it or not. Take care, Geralt, and may my gift serve you well. Might be a very long time before we get to see Regis ever again. Hey, BB. So, uh, the lady that was here. How might I be of service, sir? Okay, just wanted to explain to you that it's okay. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. It, that it's okay that she was here. People. People, we don't have anything to do now. What do I do with my life? <laughs> well, first of all, where was Yen? That place was kind of behind the vineyard here, right? Uh oh, where was she? <laughs> I have no clue. Oh, there you are. Hey. Can we talk? Always. With pleasure. There's really nothing for us to do! So... Talk again later? Of course. I'm not going anywhere. <sighs> I don't even know how to end this off because we're just kinda... in the middle of nowhere and that's it. Oh. Well, I think, um, I'm a little bit curious about the smoke that's going on there because I'm pretty sure I haven't seen that before. What's going on? Something happening? Before we really end off here, we can have a quick glance. Maybe I just never noticed it? Turning grounds. We're here again. Oh. Oh. Hmm. A lot of people died during the vampiric raid earlier. I see. Monsters, wildcats, bandits, trample all for I come! Well, that was kind of depressing imagery to end off on. But that's life. We want a happy ending, and in the end, we had Regis running off somewhere else. Anna Henrietta is okay with her sister again, although I'm not sure what Sienna's really... Is she gonna really get punished or... What? So in real life, we can't really get that happy ending that we were really hoping for. But hey! Me and Yen are here and maybe that's really all that matters. Oh my gosh, Yen, what are you doing? I was just gonna pose here so that I could end off. Well, I have a lot of thoughts on the ending of Blood and Wine here, as well as Witcher 3 as a whole, now that we've finished playing the base game and the Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine, but I think I'll save all that for the next video, where I take a look at the alternate paths. Fortunately for these DLCs, it's possible for us to go back a little bit and just change the entire ending, which wasn't really possible back in the base game, but um... Yeah, we're technically done the main story here. This is the end of Geralt's story for my canon playthrough anyway, but I do want to see what we got next, so I will see you on the next and last Witcher 3 video.